Think you should I mean I really think you should yeah. oh, God. G'day guys, it's Jarhe and we're back with Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator by the Game Rumps. So we're gonna keep on continuing. Now I have to go back a little bit because when I recorded the last this episode again, it go corrupted and messed up, so I have to refilm it. So it's been a couple of days since I did the last filming of this, so I forget what characters sound like and all that jazz. So let's get straight on into it. Oh no. I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? I wake up from a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early birds. Do want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing, I drift back to sleep. No. Whoops, I must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud. Still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it's Craig. I do want to catch up. Happy up to the gym. Just working up my fitness. He's my witness. Ooh. Hey, my man. I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. I stretch my bones. I stretch and my bones creep. I got us to fall asleep on the couch. I throw off the blanket and... Hey, wait. I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child, you know, that blessed life I have with that child of mine. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. Which is realistically nothing. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds are chirping, and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing at the front stretching, of course. He spots me away as enthusiastically. Hey, bro! Good morning! Hey, good to see you, my man. I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. You ready to kick some butt? Go say poise, my dude. With your help, I am. Help! With your help. I get the feeling this is going to be less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with oh. you here. Dude, bro. It hey. means a lot. Hey! Nathan. So if you don't know the voice that's by Nate Wants to Battle, aka Nathan Sharp, aka Nathan Smith, he's an amazing musician and I love his music to death. Like I listen to it every single day. He's such a phenomenal singer and a great person in general and I hope one day I'll get to meet him. It'd be really cool. We head into the gym and I immediately and I'm immediately Im <laughs> and I'm immediately imitate intimidated. I can't read or speak. All of these people look like they could break me in half. It seems like Craig is friends with all of them. He high fives whoosh, and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay. I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be. Walking. That's as bad as much as I can do. So, I know we're on the treadmills. Yeah. And those over there are ellipticals. Very good. What's all the other stuff? <laughs> hey, they might look like, they might look a little scary, but I guarantee you they will serve a specific purpose for building but muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle T flex as a muscle I didn't even know existed on the machine. I think was once used to process grain into flour. What is that? What is that guy doing? Nice. Why is that guy doing that to himself? Just why? 
That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Training to crush people's skulls with his thighs? Using a medieval torturing device, praying to some sort of pain god. Well, he's praying to a pain god. It's like a, a religious self lagitation meant to atone of one's sins. You're actually not far from the truth. I know, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How, um, <gasps> how long are you doing the <laughs> buff thing? Couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or a buff thing? Oh, uh, I coached my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. He is hot. Uh, I keep busy. What you do? For, what do you do for fun? He's changing into Joy Trignani. I love learning. I try to live my life to close to Jimmy Buffett as long as possible. I check out my hot bod. I love learning. I think learning about everything is so fascinating and just wanting to learn more is always good. Even if it's random stupid knowledge that you will never use in your life. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge, taking up all the intellectual content. You know, history, the paranormal, wilderness survival, uh, aliens, most things. So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Yes. Ooh, he liked it. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging. I'm gonna like have a heart attack and die. Please give everything to Amanda, except my money and my food. Give that to Craig, because... Bless one. I looked over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. A sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. <gasps> I can feel my life was draining through every orifice on my body. <laughs> hey. Remember when my fish died in college? <laughs> no. I don't like the story. <gasps> Oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is this is very fast. Help. And we're at that party and you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction. So of course I did. I do a sick sick cake stand and get everyone cheering. And then I uh, try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run up to me post cake stand with a dying dirty fish in your hand that you scooped off the ground and you're yelling at me that we had to leave. So we're running out of the frat party with a fish trying to give it mouth to mouth resuscitation. And when we get when we get him home and he and get him into the bowl of water, the process was grim. And the next day, he is hey. alive and well. They never did catch the great fish thief of Grand Ridge you. Huh. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Bro. Jesus, that hurt. Dude, bro, you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits, man. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright. Alright, well, here. I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I started with what must be apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy. Here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really great. And good for you. It's my special recipe. Hey. Pretty proud of it. Hey, let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood. The treadmill's out your speed. No pun intended, bro. <laughs> good one. Well, I'm going to put some ice on this everything. See you around? Yeah, I will. I left the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I go home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. <laughs> I say that every day of my life. 
No, no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be meeting Amanda's- I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Oh god, I am late for the teacher's meeting. Stand up for yourself, don't let anyone disrespect you. Hell yeah. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully no one will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, is it room 03 or room 08? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavy lined eyes. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. Uh, I don't know. We try the exit. Alright, wise guy, you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up the stairs to the left. Can't miss them. I head up the stairs, walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where the low rent general way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out oh. of the classroom next to his locker. Okay. I'm down with this. Loosen. Don't you have a third period to get to? <sighs> Fine, hmm? Mr. Vega. Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I gave him a glare as he walks out. We are not cool. Ha! <laughs> cool it! Mm. We are not cool. You must be Jay. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting oh. in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat on one of his conveniently small students' desks in the back. Mike gets stuck in this thing. I agree. The desks are so small in my school. It's no joke. Like, you put your laptop on and that's it. You have, like, a this much room around the mm. edge. It's like, there's no point. How am I supposed to write anything? Alright, where were we? Hmm. Now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Sarling's um. Catchers in the Rye? Um, yes. Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows in the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Mm. The whole um. class erupts into laughter. Of course they do, because they're all children. Alright. Hey, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please oh. sit down. Now, Holden Corthel is an unreliable nader in the sense that. The bell for the end of the period rings. All the students Sweet immediately get up Jago. and make a break for the door. Sweet Bang Jago! Remember to do your reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your text. Hmm? Nobody's listening. Or not, I guess. We all can get Fs. Mm. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Middle schoolers, huh? Right. Eh. Don't you teach high schoolers? Both. You know. Budget cuts. Hmm? Right. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Oh. Vega. Please. Call me eh. Hugo. I don't normally do these improv parent teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behaviour. Eh. What's going on? Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently though, she's been falling behind, she's not completing assignments, and has been doing rather poorly on tests. Normally I'd talk this up to senioritis, but... That's strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hasn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I've been too busy looking at all them hot dads. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved. She's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Well, that's why we both are the same. We both have a tendency to bottle things up, as I do. We did just move. I'm not going to say she's fine because I don't actually know that for so sure. So I'm going to be honest. Well... We just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda oh. was more excited about it than I was. 
See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. I don't know. But she keeps heading down this road. I don't know how important art school is to her and I would hate to see her miss out on her scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Mm. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Mm. Hey, Hugo. Yes. Ah. Did I ever catch that right? Yes. Oh, he liked that. As I leave the classroom, I made my way out of school. I was still a little bit shocked at him that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. Same girl. She always has been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with class for now. But I, by now, and I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. And maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Bim, bim, bim. I pull up the cardboard and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossiped about our celebrity crushes, thank you. So you talked about Maria Baltine the whole time? It was a very protective meeting. I don't know who the person is, but it was very protective. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Um... Let's make something at home. I don't really want to go to the free court. Let's do something at home. Cool. I think with our powers combined, we could throw together a gourmet meal worthy of the food channel. I don't know about that, but I can promise you at least be edible. That's the spirit! We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have that parent perspective because, you know, maybe the parent has also dealt with similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is that it's good to share. Love you! Have you been reading my tweets? You have Twitter? What is your Twitter name? I want to follow you, Amanda, because mm. literally I would follow you in real life. What? Uh, never mind. <laughs> Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. I oh, want fine, pops, senioritis and all that. As long as there's not a boy or a girl. As long as there's not a significant other in your life, I'd... they have to meet me first. Oh. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's classes. It's fine. He's fine. We pulled up to the stoplight and I might... I know I, Amanda. She's still texting. Just... I just want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Ugh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me to know about. That's frustrating. Because I like to know what people are about constantly, and it's just really annoying when people don't tell me. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys are going to be in the same school? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mana keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, it's a. Uh, I don't. Think you'll get it? Okay. Ah. Who are you texting? Noah. Ew. Who's Noah? My friend. <sighs> Does he go to your school? Yep. Do you like ah. Noah? What? No, Dad. Ugh. <sighs> Can't believe you would. Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez, why would you? Girls and guys can be friends, you know. Ugh, gross. Sorry, sorry, jeez, calm down. Just, I'm just asking a question. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. Oh. He's my friend. Amanda, you and I are on the same wavelength, girl. Okay, okay, jeez. Jeez. <laughs> this is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. It's okay to cry if you're feeling sad. Ooh, we have a nice kitchen. Amanda and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this... I found this Aristocal mac and cheese recipe online and I've been dying to try it. Artisanal? These two ingredients, mac and cheese. There's two ingredients to mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. You can have bacon too, it's really good. Dad, please try and enjoy the finer things in life. I think of you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. 
Plus, it has bacon in it. I am a god. I can predict the future. Aren't we also actually oh. collect collectively over bacon? No. Bacon never stopped being good. Huh. It just has a PR problem. We get to work on a recipe. Amanda's measuring things out and handing them to me to dump in a bowl so I can feel useful. Amanda puts me on baking duty, so I chop a bunch and toss into a pan to get sizzling. The key to a good mac and cheese is the balance of texture and flavour pops. Not only are we going to want the fullness of the cheese and bacon, but we also need the counterbalance with the crunchy mouthfeel of the breadcrumbs. Check on bacon. It's still pink and rubbery. I give the piece a little stir. Wait, what's a mouthfeel? You know, when you eat stuff and it's the texture, um... Listen, I've been watching a lot of food channel and I honestly don't know what it means. It just makes me feel sophisticated to say. Nope, nope, I get it. Every time I watch the channel, I feel like I just feel in order, hungry, jealous, insecure about my cooking abilities, and then hungry again. Same. Every time I watch the food cooking channel, I always get hungry, so I don't want to. I like the mouthfeel of the sentence. Oh my god, child. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't about food. It's also about words that are fun to say. Gregorous? Ah. Boisterous. Caddy worm. Check on bacon. The bacon is sizzling away. It smells good too. I'll give the sucker a flip. Nice. Good work, Dad. Bacon can easily overheat and cause a grease fire. I'm proud of you for remaining vigilant. We literally just moved in and I'm dead so not burning this place down. Eyes like a hawk. Amanda finishes with the mac and cheese and I toss the bacon bits in there. After stirring it all together, I take a taste. How's the mouth feel? Mm -hmm. Taste tacular. Ah. Not an actual word, but I will allow yes. it. She tries a spoonful. Taste tacular. It's not a word, Amanda. We settle it on the couch with our bowls of mac and cheese. Oh, right, cool. Long hold ice roll paramore ghost trucker is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yeah. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also the hunting goes. Eh? Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode of racing, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother, truck drivers, and ghost hunters duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no. Why was I trying to do a fake Australian accent? Oh, that hurt. Oh no. The ghost. Don't got control of the truck. I can't steer on them damn ice roads. Let me use the EVMP, EVP, meter to try and communicate with them spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying, you're gonna die. That's because we're about to die, you son of a... This is art. This episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start an argument on the internet. You know, talking to Twitter and stuff. I stay up a little longer, curious by the exploitation, the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogburn after their disastrous road ice accident. Afterwards, I call into bed and get a good night's sleep. I exercise regularly and you'll stay healthy. That is a good dad tip. Stand up for yourself, don't let anyone disrespect you. Mm, 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 hmm. That was really sassy, why did I do that? But it's really true. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We had cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We were able to put together a few shelves and one desk, and I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. So, are you excited for the cookout today? And with that, I'm going to leave a little bit of a cliffhanger. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, let me know in the comments below and tell me which dads are going to be at the cookout, because I don't know, it could be all of them, could be one of them, it, we know Joseph is definitely going to be there, the weird blonde kid, he was the type, like the blonde hair, blue eyes, that was kind of like the types I liked when I was younger, but he just looked creepy, blue eyes is my thing, but that was just creepy. Anyway. Alright guys, in the next video, sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. See ya. This thing is making so much noise. But look, it's a reminder to say that you are